Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all doing today? I'm going to be showing you something brand new, which I think you're really, really going to like. It's called our Cleopatra Pendant and Earring Set. So essentially, what we've done, we've created this really, really beautiful pair, matching pair of the, the pendant and the earrings using a gorgeous crystal rivoli as well. So together, uh, uh, with some Delica beads, I've used some size 15 beads and some 4 mil bicones. I've sort of brought them all together to create these beautiful designs. And then on top of that, I'm going to show you how you can turn it into a stud earring, which I think looks fantastic. And then the pendant hangs on this really, really gorgeous stuff, which is called Shimmer Chain. So I'm going to show you how to do all of those different things. Um, don't forget, of course, if you watched last week's stream where I had the mini kits, um, I did also have all of those. Um, they're still on sale, so we we can uh, you can you can go and get all of those ready and available whenever you want to go get them. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's get on to doing some jewelry making, shall we? Um, I think it's going to be good fun. I think I've just realised. Uh, yes. Good. So Facebook, for some reason, wasn't on. Hopefully Facebook should be working now. Hopefully all of you over in Facebook land are there and watching. Um, but yeah, let's let's sort of get on with it, shall we? Uh, let me just adjust a few things. Oh, my camera's a bit far away, I think. Let me just shift that a little closer. There we go. That's a bit better. And there. Perfect. Great. Now I can hopefully demonstrate a little bit clearer, a little bit easier. Um, my camera was just not quite where I was expecting it. Uh, but yeah, so where where's my little mouse gone? It's hiding. Of course it's hiding. Yep, all is well now it seems. Perfection. Uh, yeah, so let me let me show you what the actual finished design looks like. It is really, really beautiful. This piece is f spectacular, I think, personally. Um, let me just show it to you. Uh, where are you? Hiding from me. There we go. Uh, so if I just zoom on in. Here we are. Uh, oh, no, wrong one. Where is it? Here we go. Ta-da, there we go. So these are the fully finished designs just here. This is uh, one of the pendants. There are four different color options that we've got. Which... So, uh, yeah, tell me, which one do you like best? These are the four different colorways that I've got here. So we've got the Pharaoh's Treasure, which I think is gorgeous. It's that blue with gold tones. This is the one I'm going to be demonstrating. Uh, we've also got the White Sphinx, which has this evening rainbow color rivoli on the inside, which is amazing. Um, this one here is our Poison colorway. And the last one, which I think is absolutely beautiful, is our Temptress. That one there, it's got this sort of rosy, purpley even, sort of coppery crystal on the outside. It's like a copper and violet together, uh, and it looks really spectacular. So this is the pendant, and then of course, you'll also make your stud earrings as well, which you can see there's your little stud with the same sort of design. And then we've got this really clever netting that we've done onto the back, one to protect your Rivoli, but for two also to um, have your 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 little stud protected and sort of covered and everything as well. I just realized my face isn't showing for some reason. Where am I? Come on now. I'm hiding for some reason. Can't see myself. Um, that's odd. Ah, oh, wait, this is why. Here we are. Ta-da! Now I'm back. <laughs> back in the corner. Uh, yeah, so let's let's say hello. Let's see who's here. Let's do a few little hellos to those of you who've already joined us. Uh, like I said, I am going to demonstrate... I'll do, I'm going to demonstrate the pendant, but I'm going to be demonstrating this colour just here, which is our um, Pharaoh's Treasure colourway. So just checking who we've got with us. 
we have Rebecca. She's here. Uh, she said, I just had to stop uh, stop singing my karaoke. Uh, I hope you were having fun, though. I hope I haven't ruined your karaoke fun. Uh, Karen is here. She says, good morning, everyone. Uh, we've got Ruti. Hi, Ruti. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're going to have lots of fun watching today's stream. We've uh, really made this design uh, a really effective one, so I hope you're all going to like it. But um, particularly, Ruti is one of our uh, our regulars, regular watchers from Israel. So thanks for joining. Uh, we've got Nancy as well. Wayne is here, as always. Thanks for joining us, Wayne. Um, we've got Karen, we've got Fiona, uh, we've got Jackie, we've got Jane, Maxine is watching from Facebook land, as I said earlier. Uh, we've got Madalena, which I haven't seen you before, so thanks for joining us, Madalena. Lovely to see you. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be showing this pendant right here. I'll show you the, the sort of the premise is the same, but the, but the pendant... Uh, is a few steps extra. So I'm going to show you both. They're different sizes, which is nice. Uh, we've got Seema, uh, Sarah Ogilvie. Lots of people I don't recognize. Lots of new names, which is fantastic. Which, if you are new, um, do make sure you like, share, subscribe, all of those sorts of things. Um, especially if it's your first time watching, uh, give me a little shout out, put a comment in down below, letting me know who you are, and I will try and pop that up so I can show you, um, to everybody and sort of greet everyone from, on your behalf, and we can get everyone to greet you as well. So yeah, lots and lots of people. Nancy says they are all beautiful, but the question is, which one is your favourite, Nancy? Comment everyone, which one is your favourite? I want to know, which is your fave? Um, so, let's, here we go, uh, yeah, let's get started. Oh, we've also got Azra, uh, this is Saba Sultana, is Azra here, so thanks for joining us as well, Azra. Lovely to see you as well. Um, and we've also got, uh, yeah, Irina as well. So yeah, these are the four colours, so let me know which one you like the best. They are all, I think, absolutely spectacular, but with our Rivalies, it really takes them to the next level. Um, but essentially, I assume that a lot of you know how to do peyote stitch because essentially what I've got myself here is my little Rivoli already ready to go that I've made, um, which I haven't quite got it reinforced yet. I need to just finish that last little step. But essentially this is the, the base piece that we're gonna have. So I've used Delica beads. You can see those there in gold. Those are my Delicas that I've used uh, just here. And then what I'll be doing with this, so Delicas, you need 48 in your initial row. Then you're going to Pyote that just once. So that's going to give you, see, look how you've got one bead there, then two, then one, then two. So that's just one row of Pyote in your 48 beads. Then we're going to do two rows of Pyote in size 15 on the front. So you can see those, that's those blue beads there, they're size 15s. And then we're gonna do the same on the back. But the one thing that you wanna do as well is to go through your very end row. So the last row of Pyote on 15s on the back and the last row of Pyote of 15s on the front. You wanna go through them all again, just to make sure that they're extra, extra um, firm. That's the, the sort of the important part that we want to have there. So yeah, if we have a little look, hopefully, uh, yep, this is an 18 millimeter Rivoli. Uh, this is what Pam has asked, 48. So is that an 18 mil Rivoli? Yes, it is. This is an 18 mil and then the earring pieces they have a 14 mil. So this one's a little bit smaller that you'll be doing, but today I'm gonna to do the 18 mil with 48, and we're gonna turn that just here into this. And we're also, I'm gonna show you in the tutorial how to net the back like this. And I'm also gonna show you how to do that little uh, hanging, whoops, there it is, that little hanging pendant bit there. So you can do that and then just hang it, which I'll show you as well how to use the ball chain, which is a spectacular material uh, that we have here for doing um, 
nice delicate little necklaces and things. So I'm going to show you the whole process. We're starting from here, which we, we can, I, I sort of hope, if you haven't seen how to do this before, I might get Jermaine to put into the comments. We have done a video on this before, our little Crystal Kitty Cat video. So I'm not going to go over this again, but I'll show you all the rest. So anyway, I'm going to start with my netting. So if you have a look, I've got my little Rivoli there, all locked in both front and back. But now I'm going to start doing my, um, my netting here. So the way that we do this netting, it's a nice, simple little process. It's all done completely with size 15 beads. So if you have a look, because I told you that we used 48 beads in our initial ring, that means that there's 24 up beads and 24 down beads. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 24 of up and 24 of down. So to join those, we're actually going to sort of do a netting, a circular netting it's called, where we're going to join from here to here, then here, then here, and so on, all the way around and go in a spiral working towards the center until we've created that beautiful uh, spiraling pattern in towards the center. So first things first, we're using our size 15 beads, as I said, which I'll get myself some out ready to use. Um, there's not, they're, they're quite small, but that kind of helps to uh, keep everything neat and even and looking lovely. So just exiting, we want to make sure we're exiting from one of our up beads, which at the minute I'm only exiting from a down bead. So see just here, wait a second, zoom in a tiny bit. See I'm exiting from here, I need to make sure I'm exiting from one of my up beads. See that? So don't forget as well, it is important to have gone through, once you've done your last row, to go through all of your beads again, oops, one too many there, to go through all of these sort of size 15 beads one extra time to make sure that you've got it nice and secure. So essentially, even though I've already gone through and added all of my beads, what you'd be, whoops, I went the wrong direction, ha ha ha, that would be why that was happening. Uh, there we go. So once you've added your last one, you want to go through all of those beads again. So into that last little one, it's handy, I can show you the finishing it off and the stepping up now. So into those last two little beads there, and we'll get ourselves into position from the up bead, ready to continue. So see that? So there, you're coming out of an up bead, but we want to make sure you go all the way around like this. I'm not going to do it for today, but it makes it extra snug, extra secure. So see that, how I've gone through the next two up bead, the, the next down bead and the next up bead? We'll go through that. And you go all the way through all the whole circle doing that process to get yourself finished. So it finishes, see like that, you just keep going through that same thread path and that will make this last little row extra, extra tight, which is what we want. And then once we've got that, we can sort of continue and start doing our netting. So if I grab myself now, my first round of netting, I'm going to be using groups of seven beads. So if you have a look just here, there's, if you have a look, we've got ups and downs. If I pick up seven beads, so where are you? One, I tell you, I need to pin my bead mat down. It's moving around too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little beads. So we're gonna pick up seven of our little size 15 beads here. And now, if you have a look, we're going to skip seven beads. So like I said, we do, we've got all these ups and down beads around. So if you have a look, there's the first bead. Then you've got two, three, four, five, six. We're going to skip the seventh and go into that eighth bead. So see that? We picked up. We picked up seven beads. We skipped seven beads. And we went into that eighth little bead there, which if you want to count it, we're skipping one, two, three up beads and going into that fourth up bead. So when you pull that tight, you'll see it just gives you this sort of loop 
on the inside of your Rivoli. So we'll just pick that up and I'm going to repeat that a few more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little beads. And again, we're going to skip one, two, three up beads and into the fourth one. So we're adding seven beads and then we're skipping seven ups and downs. So I've just counted the ups only because I find it's easier that way. And there you go. You can see we've now got our next little loop. So pick up seven more. One, let me just hold down my little bead mat that I've got just out of shot here. Four, five, six, and seven. Don't forget, if you want to get this little kit, I've got the link in the description where you can go and get it from. Uh, it is on sale, kind of. You can get up to 15% off uh, just for the next week. So there we go. I'm skipping the one, two, three up beads into the fourth up bead. Pull that nice and tight as well. You can see there's our next loop. Pick up seven more. I'm going to need more 15s, I think. There we go. Get myself out a few more. Another group of seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The reason we've used seven, it's important to use an odd number. You'll soon see why, because we want to have one where there's a central bead. So three and then uh, three and then one, and then a central one, and then three more. So I've skipped three, gone into the fourth. Let's continue around a few more. One, two, three. We're almost all the way around now. So four, five, six, seven. Skip those three. There we go. Into the fourth. And now last time, we're going to just add in one last one. Fill this last little gap just here. Which one? Two, three, four, five, six and seven little beads and we're going to bring ourselves back to where we began so into this little 15 just here through there pull that all the way through and there you go you can see so now we've got these sort of inner little sections everywhere and i'm going to now bring our spiral slightly more interesting so if we have a little look you know how I said we needed to have an odd number? We want to be exiting from that central most bead. So because I've added seven, if you go one, two, three, you've got one bead in the center and then one, two, three after. So I'll go into that fourth little bead here, which will be the central most one of that first group of seven. See that coming out of there? Pull that through. And you see, because we're also working in that sort of seven, that central one, when you pull it, it kind of makes it that a little bit more tight, a little bit more pointy, uh, which again is also very, very nice. It sort of helps to give us an aesthetic look about it. But now we're going to reduce down. So you know how we did seven little steps each time? Now we're going to do them in groups of five. So from this group of seven, I'm going to jump to the next group of seven with five beads. So I picked up my five little beads here. One, two, three, into the fourth one there. Just that one little bead there. Pull that. And that's going to create a nice little gap there. It's a little too big to fill that gap, but that's perfect because when we reach around, you'll see it's going to give us space to allow it to bend. So we want to pick up five more again. And we'll go into the next group. So one, two, three, into that fourth little bead, the one right in the middle, all the way through. Pull that tight. And we've joined that one now too. We'll do it again. So I get myself out a few more size 15 beads. I need lots of 15s. Let's get lots out. There we go. So five more I need to pick up. One, two, three, four, five more little beads. And once again, we're going to jump across and into the middle of the next group of seven. So you do this a total of six times. The reason that we've, when we're doing it with six, in the end, it's kind of going to give us a really nice 
star type shape, a six pointed star, which I quite like. Um, you could also, if you wanted to do this, do it in like a like a really clever way with colors so that you can see the stars a bit more clearly where you do each step with your different color. And it looks really effective. But just for this design, I've done it plain because it's easy. But if you wanted it to be a feature on the front, it is really easy to play with the color as well. Um, it's a good little design. So now I'll do the next one, which is pretty much the... Uh, there's just two more little gaps. One, two, three, four, five. I can't remember which color everyone said. I wish I could do like a... I, you know, I could have done... But uh, I didn't think of it until just now. I could have done a poll so that you guys could have voted on which one you thought was the best colour. But instead, why don't you just comment down, everybody. Comment in and tell me which one you like the best. So we do have the four colours. If you want to see them all, um, because I've already shown them, but I want to keep demonstrating. Um, if you want to check out the little link in the description, it will show you all four different colours, which you can see them on our website. Um, and then why don't you pop on back and comment in which one it is that you like the best. So I'm going to just do this last little gap. So here is that group of seven. You can see it ends here and begins as the next round there. So I'll go into that last little group, the central one there, to pretty much bring us back to where we started this step. You can see it's a little bit loose. It's all going to come in tight. We want it like this right now. Now, if you just pull the next one. Jackie says she likes the white one best. Sphinx, white sphinx. So we're going to do the same process again now, but because we used five beads, it's now the third bead that we want to use to add in our little group. So we'll pick up into that little central one. So again, you can see you get that nice sort of picoing of the triangle shape. And now we were doing sevens, and then we did fives, Yes, you guessed it. Now we're going to go and do groups of three. So we're going to skip to the middle one of the next one with three beads. Pull that all the way through. Do the next one. One, two, three little beads and into the next group. So you can see the next group. This is the middle bead here. One, two, three there. There's that next one. Pull that tight. Get it nice and firm. Do the next one. One, two, three little beads here. And we'll go into the middle of this. And the nice thing is this spiraling tightens everything towards the center. There we go. There's the next little one. We'll go through there. We'll pull all of this tight. Get my tail thread a bit shorter. There we go. And then we'll do the next group of three. One, two, and three. Skip across and into the middle of the next group. And we'll just continue along till we've got all six groups done. So one, two, three beads more. Pick up my three again and if we just very, very carefully pull that that way, jump into this middle one here. We're almost there. We're almost there. You can pull that nice and tight. And then three more little beads. One, two, three. We'll skip across. And you can see here's our first little group of three again. We'll go into this gap. Pull it all nice and tight. So it creates like a bit of a circle shape happening. And now we're going to repeat it one last time. So we're going to reduce by an odd number again. We're going to go straight to the middle one. So the second of the three beads now. And now we'll pick up one little bead each time and join the gaps. So pick up one bead here. Just one because that's the next reduction of our odd numbers. And we're going to skip this one, skip this one and into the middle of our next group of three. Pull it tight, and then we'll get our next little group of three. So pick up one bead and jump across into this one here. I've got my concentration tongue out. I did a second ago. Pull that, 
nice and tight too. And you'll see it's all going to start to nicely come together in the center. Pick up one here, go into this middle middle one here, little middle one, not middle middle, little middle one there, whoops, just out of shot, sorry. Pull that. And just a couple more. Through there. And one more time. So through these three, through the middle one. Just like that there. Pull that tight. And we're getting real close now. Last one. So we're going to go into that next little middle bead around our circle. And look at that, when you pull that tight, it all comes together beautifully covering that center. And just to make sure it's extra tight now, I'm gonna go through those six beads that we added. So it's gonna like pico them, so see that? We're gonna skip that little one that's in between there, pull those together. Then we'll do the same again, so we'll just skip into that one. So just the six beads that we've added now, because we've done all the adding of one, adding of one, adding of one, we've completed that, so we're just going to pass through them all without adding any beads, and it's going to bring it into a really lovely, firm little central circle of six beads there. The sort of the center of our net. but looks really nice now, doesn't it? There we go. Perfect. How does that look? It all comes together right at the very, very end. So uh, it works really nicely. You sort of, the whole time you're going, is this gonna be a bit loose? Is this gonna be a bit loose? It's looking a bit loose. Is it loose? Is it? Is it? And then when you finally get to the end, you see it all hugs together when you do that last little ring there to pull it all in together. Everything gets sucked into the center and looks really good. Uh, Azra asks me, are you using a size 10 needle and what thread? I'm using our bead spider, uh, the Spidalon thread that we sell on our website. And the needle that you get with this is the one that comes with your, your Spidalon thread. If you are getting the kit though, of course, um, it does include the needle and the thread. If you didn't know, all of our kits actually include all the needle, all the thread, everything that you need. Uh, so if you're giving them as gifts, for example, for someone else to make, for Christmas especially, um, you don't have to be worried about it not having everything. They're not going to need any extra things opening it up and going, oh, I needed a needle. Well, that's not what happens with our kits. We supply you with everything. So that's a good question there from Azra. So thanks for, for asking. Um, so yeah, let's now do this next little step. So I've got my front all done. I've got my back netting looking fantastic. So I'll show you what I'm going to do next, which is essentially creating this little loop section that we can attach our chain to. So I'm going to do that now while I'm here, just because it's easy. And basically what we need to do is weave around until we are at one of sort of these points here. So this sort of second group in a group. So you can see the first group of netting is there. So that's the middle of a seven. We want to be at the middle of a group of five beads. So now if I just pick up my thread and I'm going to weave around, you don't need to go through very many, only three little beads should be. And that's going to bring us, oh, get my thread out of the way so it will actually focus. There we go. This is going to bring us to the middle of one of those groups of five beads. So you can see I've got two beads on that side, two beads on this side, this one's in the middle. That's a group of five. So I'll pull my thread all the way through so that we're exiting here. And to create, this is going to become the top of our little pendant just here. So to create our little loop, I'm going to pick up one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little size 15 beads. 
And if you have a look just directly opposite it, this is the edge of my Pyote just here, where my, my bezel, where my one of my sevens join to each other. So I'm going to go through that bead there. See that one? So it's directly opposite, but we're going to stay on the same side. So I'm exiting this side, so I'm going to enter on this side. We're going to pick up seven beads, as uh, eight beads, sorry, I've got. And that's just going to create one single little loop. So now I'll pick up eight beads again. Make sure you're using the exact same number that you did just before. So five, six, seven, eight little beads. And now we're going to jump back to where we were. So we're exiting from this bead. We're going to come back into this same bead where we were just a second ago, but now from the other direction. So we're exiting. The thread is coming out this side. See that? It's coming out of this side of the bead. So we want to enter from this side, push it all the way through, and that's going to give us two little loops. But they're a little bit separated from each other. So now we want to bring them back together so that they will be nicely joined. So we're going to do like a, a little mini, a faux version, I should say, of our, um, like a, a little faux herringbone laddery type thing. So I'm going to go up into the beads of this loop. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll go into just four little beads for now. There we go. One, two, three and four. Actually, I did eight, didn't I? I'm thinking about nine. So we're going to go into the first three beads only. So see that? One, two, three beads we've gone through. And we'll use this. We make sure it's nice and tight here. Pull on it firmly. And now we can just go back down. But we want to make sure one, two, three beads through those three beads there, but not into the fourth. So pull, and when you pull that, you'll see it's gonna bring those little pieces nicely together. So see that, see them, did you see them join to each other? So I'm not exiting back into the 15 of our, our little um, work section now. Uh, I'm not in the bezel, I'm gonna stay inside of this little loop that we've created and I'm going to skip that last bead and go just back straight into my other work. You can see this thread is coming just a teeny bit loose, don't worry about that. When we pull this tight it will all firm back up again. So we're going to go through five beads now and all the way down to the opposite side. See that? So that we're just before the one before the bezel, on the bezel sorry. Go through there we won't go into the bezel. We're going to just jump across and go back into this one. We're going to go up just three beads only. See that? So into those three beads there. Pull it all the way tight. And then we'll just finish that off by going down these three beads, the final three beads of this side. So that's going to give us four little joins keeping it together. You didn't have to do this part. If you if you like them being separate, you can keep them separate. But I kind of like them being um, joined to each other. So this sort of just gives you that little join. Can't get my bead into that my needle into that bead. There we go. One, two, three. There. Pull that all the way tight. It should just make sure it's not caught in the wrong gap. There we go. Pull that tight. And now you can see they're stitched to each other. And we've got a nice little loop there. How good's that? Easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So now I will just pop back into my bezel. So if we have a look, see how we're all joining to this one little bead? Let's go back into this bead here. And... I'm going to just weave this thread off. So essentially the way I'll do that, I'm going to use a brand new thread to, to do this next step, which hopefully I've got some scissors or have I got some scissors floating around? Oh no, where are my scissors? 
I'll have to have a look for them in a second. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to finish this thread off. This is the great thing about Pyote Stitch. You don't actually have to tie any knots. So when you're doing your Pyote, if you don't want to tie any knots, don't do it. You can do like the, what I call the round the houses method. I've got a cup of tea just here. Should have a sip. Got my Matthew mug. Do you know, a funny thing happened the other day. I'm going to just finish this thread off, so just watch what I'm doing. I'm going to just go round and round a couple of times, um, and that will secure it. But yeah, a funny thing happened the other day, which... Um, ah, handy. I speak, and they arrive. Scissors. Good. Thank you. Um, so yeah, a funny thing happened the other day, talking about my Matthew mug. Uh, because we've got nearly 30,000 subscribers on YouTube now... Uh, when we got to 25,000 subscribers, YouTube said, hey, you can have merchandise. And I was like, why would I need to have merchandise? They were like, you can, you know, you can, um, you, you do live streams, so you qualify for our merchandise policy. You can have, um, you know, t-shirts and hoodies that are all bead spider inspired. Uh, you can even have mugs if you wanted to. And you know what? I was thinking, like, at, at first I was like, no, why would I ever do that, you know? But actually, doing the making the Matthew mug available would actually be really, really fun. Just get it printed as a Matthew mug, and then anyone who wants to get one can actually get one. So, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that sounds like a fun idea? Something, uh, I mean, YouTube are offering it to us because our channel is now large enough that they're saying, hey, why don't you do it? But, um... I don't know, do you fancy having your own Matthew mug as well? You know, where I hand-painted it myself, because clearly I'm just such an artist. Uh, and, well, oh, there's my dinosaur. Oh, my dinosaur's disappeared. How weird. For some reason, the yellow and the grass don't show very well on a green screen. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Who, who who would actually want a Matthew mug? I don't know. Comment in, because maybe I'll actually get around to doing it if people are like, yeah, that'd be so fun. You know, for a laugh. Stacy says, I'd buy that. <laughs> I'd buy that, says says Stacy. I'm glad, I'm glad you would. At least that's one person. Um, so yeah, now that I've done that, I just went around and around and around and around. And now, because I've done that, I went through it a few times, and it's going to lock it in place. It can't really come undone. So it means I can just cut this thread off and not have to worry about it anymore. So I'll show it to you one more time with my tail thread, and then I'll bring in a new thread. Because you do the same technique to bring in a new thread and same forth for getting rid of your tail thread as well. So let's just pop that in there. And doing the same thing. Do you know what? I'll put it in right-hand view for you all. Uh, and, ah, oh, here we go. Hopefully this is accurate. No, it's not. Ticker. Put that ticker away. There we go. Uh, I'll put it in right-hand view for this next little part. So it's exactly the same, but I'll do it in right-hand view. I forgot that I can keep going left and right. So anyway, with my right hand now i'm coming out of this thread here so doing my round the houses method you literally just go into the bead beside once all the way through back again and make sure it disappears into the gap see look your thread disappears in there we're back to where we started do it once more back again through and the following bead as well. So pull that tight and there we go. We've got that nicely secured and you can just cut it off. It's as easy as that. This is the great thing about that little round the houses method. And you can see just here, if you wanted to, you could just leave it. If you just wanted a, a nice little basic pendant shape, you've got your little rivoli there uh, with the front section just here and then of course you've got that lovely netting on the back and we've got our little pendanty bit there as well you in left hand at the moment. I'm in right hand at the minute why someone asked. yes yes I've just changed to right hand view I saw someone asked 
Uh, but yeah, there we go. So now there's your little pendant, and I'm going to show you now. I'll bring in a new thread, and then I'm going to continue along and add my sort of outer edging to turn this into this. So this is the next step. We've got everything ready, and now we will do the same to this one here. So this is the same just here. And now we're going to add our outside bezel for a bit of fun. So again, I don't know, I really like this colour. I wanted to, do you know, I should have demonstrated, I should have done a double demonstration, one with one colour and one with the other colour. This one is the uh, Temptress colour, which I think is spectacular. It's got this really nice little crystals here on the outer edges where they've got like half rose gold and then half like this sort of crystal. So you can see it's sort of crystal on the inside, but then if you roll it over, it's like a metallic rose gold too. So they're really, really interesting little crystals that we've put. And then of course, well, the Rivoli speak for themselves, don't they? But anyway, let's bring in a new thread now. And then we're gonna do our bezel. And that's pretty much all we need to do. You'll, you'll sort of have the gist from then on. I'll show you how to use the shimmer chain after that. I might need a, a bead mat. I've only got one very small one, but I might need a slightly bigger one to actually show you how to do that. But anyway, I've given myself a nice little piece of thread here. I've probably given myself too much thread, but it better to have too much than not enough, as they say. So, turn this thing off. There we go. Uh, working in right hand view, because I keep forgetting to flick between the two. Thread my needle on just here like this. And I'm going to use that same technique to bring in a new thread. So what I'll do, I'm going to do it around here because, well, you'll soon see. It's easy if you pay attention to where this is. So if I start, say, around about here-ish, I'll do my round the houses. Actually, I'll do it here. I'll start just here, and I'm going to do my round the houses technique just here. So through there... All the way. I hope this isn't where I was doing my round the houses a second ago. So pull your thread almost all the way through. You want to keep your tail thread there if you need it. And now I'll do my round the houses. So exiting from this little bead here, I'm going to, whoops, from that bead there, I'm going to go into this side here of that same little bead. Oops, come on now. There we go. Pull that through there. Pull it all the way tight. So you can see it's not quite firm yet. I can still pull on this thread and it will slide. But wait till you see what happens once I do the next little round the houses. So I'll go through here. Keep my tail underneath, of course. So pull so that it disappears into the gap. Like that there. Then we'll go back back into this one here and I'll even go round once more just to make it extra secure so through here and now pull and you see if I pull on this it's way more secure it doesn't pull anymore see that it's like tight so I can go through there I'll pull here and I'll just make sure I'm exiting from this side like that and now, if you have a look, I'm pretty much exactly in line. If I just come through this little bead here, there we go. I'm now exactly in line with my central little loopy pendanty bit, which is where I would like my uh, little thing to be, one bead in front of that. So if this is where we look where the 15 is, Oops, sorry, just out of shot there. Uh, if we have a look, this is where I've got my little size 15 bead. So I want to make sure at this point that we're just sort of going to go uh, one after that little bit there. So we'll go into the next and into the next one there. All the way. There we go. There we are. So once we've got this one here, now that I'm coming out of this little bead, I'm going to start working in delicas, and we're going to do it in groups of five. So this doesn't take too long, thankfully. 
So we're going to now just start doing little loops, one by one by one, in groups of five. So I'm going to pick up five little Delica beads. So here they are, five little Delicas. I'm exiting from this bead here. And if you have a look down the central spine, see how there's ones, then pairs, then ones, then pairs, then ones, then pairs. The ones in the center are where I'm going to be joining from one and then along and along through just the central row of beads here. So see those central beads? These are the ones that I'm going to be working with. I'm going to skip. I'm, at, I'm starting here on this little bead just there. This is where my thread is exiting. I'm going to skip the first one. I'm going to pass into the second of those little spine single sets of beads. So that, when I pull that tight, is going to give me this small little loop shape. See that? Just a little one. Uh, Purple Penny's here. Welcome, Purple Penny. And also, I should say, I saw Jan Alston was here as well. Uh, glad to see you're back from holiday. I hope you had a lovely time in the med. Uh, here we go. So one, two, three, four... Five. There's our next group. So we're going to skip the first little spine bead, which is, if you look at the singles, skip the pair, skip this first little single, skip the pair, and into that next one there. See? Pull that. And now we've got cat ears. No. We're going to continue around picking up five beads until we get all the way around. So there's quite a few little groups we have to do, 12 in total, that we'll do. So I'm going to just blast through them, skip one, and into the next one. To give us the next little one. It's going to create like a nice little sun type shape, which is cool, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. And we'll skip one of the central beads and go into the next. And we're going to continue around now in this same way. So one, two, three, four, five. Don't forget, if you want to get our kit, uh, you can order from us worldwide. We ship everywhere in the world. If you're in the US, you can even shop like a local in US dollars. If you're in Europe, you can shop in euros. If you're in the UK, you can shop in British pounds, which is where I am right now. Um, if uh, We do also mail worldwide as well. So um, if you're in the US, we have like a nice flat rate, uh, which I think is about $10 or so. Um, and it's pretty quick, I hear. It only takes like a week or two, um, a little bit less, a little bit over a week. Usually it's about eight days or so to get to you in the US and Canada. Um, it gets to Europe even quicker. I think it's a little slow at the minute to Ireland, I've heard, though. Um, and generally, if you're in the UK, uh, we try and ship out the very next day, or even the same day if you order early enough, uh, so that you should have it within a working day. We try, we try and be as efficient as possible. Obviously, weekends are a little different, we're not week working on the weekends. Well, actually, I say that. I was working. I'll show you what I've been doing in just a second. Uh, I was working all weekend just the other day. Ready? D do you want to see... Do you want a little heads up about something that's coming in the next few weeks? It'll be very soon. If you want a little heads up about something, a sneak preview, I've got it just here, actually. I've been working hard on it. It's a... Uh, a bit of a lengthier process. If you want to see it, um, I don't know, comment down below. Tell me, yes, I want to see. I want to see what's what's coming. Because I'll, I'll give you a sneak preview, but only if you guys want to see it. Otherwise, I'll just keep demoing. Um, but yeah, it's uh, something that I've been working on, and I think it's looking lovely, and I hope you guys are going to like it. But... Um, Otherwise, if you want a sneak preview, comment down below saying, yes, yes, please, show me, show me. But if you want to just see me keep demoing, then comment down saying, no, just keep demoing. We don't need to see the riffraff. We just want this demo. Um, comment away and tell me how you feel about it, and then we'll see what everybody says. So I'll go into the next one, and then when I get to that point, I've got just one last one to do. And, I mean, if you like it looking like this sort of sun shape, 
which is pretty much what the earring is, except it's a slightly different technique to it. You can actually go through and pico it. So you'll see now that I'm getting all the way back to the beginning, I'm going to go through that last little spine bead there, which is just before. It's the one where this little group of five starts from. Oh yeah, everybody wants a teaser. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. We've got all yeses. All right. So it's a good timing, actually. So I've got my little star, which essentially this is similar. It's not quite the same as how I do this. This one, I sort of pico a little bit in two steps. So that's why these ones stick out so nicely. But this one, this is all we need for this when we're going to add our crystals. But that gives us that nice little sunshine. Uh, yeah, so lots of people saying, oh, I can't miss. Okay, are you ready? This is something, It's it's been, a, it's a lot of work. Work in the making that I've been making here. Uh, our next little Arazzo piece. So this is what is going to be coming. Uh, this is only halfway finished. In fact, it's not even halfway. It's going to come down to, you know, around here somewhere. Um, but it's uh, a little boy out in the snow posting his uh, letterbox. Uh, posting in his letterbox his little letter to Santa Claus. I had the full picture somewhere. I haven't got it. But anyway, I'm only, I'm only about halfway through. Uh, you can see... It's sort of all... Uh, I've used some silver line beads to make it a little bit sparkly in places. And the pillbox is looking nice and red as well. And just added some silver lining to make it shiny in places as well. But this is going to be coming in the next maybe week or two. Uh, so this is going to be the initial piece of fabric, but Jermaine is going to show you how to turn it into a craft box, which luckily I have uh, a similar craft box just here, which uh, you can see. This is one of our other kits. It's going to be similar to this where you can store your Arazzo. You can use it like a piece of fabric. I'm going to sh Jermaine, we're going to show you how to do all of this, where you can turn your Arazzo designs into a lovely piece of fabric that you can then turn into the lid of your of your craft box. So you can see, here's the uh, side of our craft box. This is the... Uh, lots of other Arazzos in here. Loads of Arazzo butterflies. Uh, but yeah, which I think I saw Wayne did one just the other day. He posted a picture of that into our uh, our bead group. Um, but yeah, there's lots of Arazzos. We need to turn them into things. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the gist. Ah, there's the coasters. These are back in stock now, by the way. I've put these back in stock, I think. But yeah, we're going to show you how to make the whole box. It's all going to be available. That's what's coming in the next um, week or so. But that's what this little fella is. And then we're going to give you the instructions to turn it into a box. Like that there. Isn't that lovely? So that's what's coming in the next few weeks or so. Jermaine says she's going to make it into a chocolate box. But yeah, that's, that's what's coming in the next week or two. But for now, let's get back to our Cleopatra. I, I have to admit, the reason that we called it Cleopatra, uh, f ironically, it's linked to the Arazzo I've been doing. Over the weekend, Maxine and I watched the uh, the film Cleopatra, all four hours of it. Four hours. It's a long film. And so I sat there doing this while we were watching the movie. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I made my progress, uh, which lots of people... Rebecca says, me, I want one. Me want one. Oh, she's gone into uh, caveman mode with her desire for the box. But yeah, I, I hope you like it. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing, uh, for the upcoming project. Uh, that's not going to be this week. But maybe, well, obviously not this week, it's Friday. Uh, but yeah, maybe next week, maybe the week after. We'll see how long it takes me to finish it. Uh, I'm going to be doing it all weekend, I think. But anyway, so now that I'm exiting from this little bead, coming back to what we were looking at, uh, I'm exiting from this little bead where this one joins. See that? There's the, the same little bead where this starts. So now I'm going to continue and we're going to add in our crystals. So we want to go to the center of these little groups just here. Uh, good night to Monica, by the way. She's in Borneo, so I think it's like 3 in the morning there now. Well, maybe not as late as that, but could be close. 
Um, so yeah, there's this one here. We can go one. We're going to pick up one. I'm, I'm going to be using my crystal bicones here. I need to make sure I've got them all out. Let's just empty these out, shall we? There we are. So I'm going to fill each of these gaps now. So I'm exiting from here. I'm going to pick up a Delica, a Crystal, and a Delica. So these are four mil crystal bicones that I have here. So this is what I'm going to be using, and that's going to fill this gap. It fills it quite nicely, actually. And if I keep my tension relatively firm, it stays quite nice. See, so look, there you go. There's the first little one filling the gap that we've got there. And so I'll just repeat that all the way around. So one plus this and the next. And we'll go through the next gap there. Gap there. Pull that. And I can see a lot of you are talking about the Arazzo. We actually have a lot of different designs. There's four butterflies. There's an angel. We've got a fairy, which the fairy is our biggest one. It's really, really large. It's like an A4 piece of paper size sort of thing. Um, a really big one. We've got the tiger. We've got a wolf. We've got... There's going to be the, snow, the, the little boy at Christmas soon. Um, what other Arazzos have we got? We've got a peacock which uh, comes with instructions to turn it into a bag, which is really cool. Um, we've also got the tulip, which actually has two of it and comes with instructions for making a box as well. Um, what else have we got? What other ones have I got? I know I've got something else. I know I'm forgetting something. But yeah, tiger, wolf, butterflies, lots of animals. Um, and then... Yeah, some florally things as well. Go check them out if you want to. It's all just on our website, which if you haven't seen our website before, uh, if you have a look down there, the little link, um, you can see the, uh, the, the web address underneath the logo. So www.beadspider.co.uk. They're, they're lots of fun to make. I really enjoy sort of just... They're super chill, actually. You can literally just sit there and... Um, like, you don't have to think about it too much. Well, you'll see it all. You'll see the design. We had uh, our coasters. Ah, the crystal, the Christmas coasters. That's right. That's another thing we've done, uh, which is back in stock. They sold out when we did them last Christmas, uh, and we haven't had them in stock until about uh, a week ago when the beads finally, we finally got around to reordering the the, the dark blue for the background. So the, the, um, the snowflake is now finally finally after all these years back in stock uh if anyone wants to to get that one which was the the coasters i wish i had one of the coasters here i could have showed it to you doesn't matter don't know where it is but anyway yeah the snowflake coasters that was a that was a hit and a half i tell you but, but i reckon the uh this little little boy in the snow might be even more popular so yeah if i just keep going here You'll see, I'm almost there. I'm like, this is nearly, nearly there. There's one other step after this one, which just really brings it all together and makes it look spectacular. Um, but we're going to get there soon. Last one, and then I've got to just do one more little step, and then that will pretty much finish this little pendant off. So the last little step here, I'm going to go through this, into the Delica on the tip and I'm going to go through these first few beads that I added so through the crystal and out that first little Delica so the little groups of a Delica a crystal and a Delica I'm going to go through them all once more but just to firm everything up see like this I'm going to add one of my little blue size 15 beads into these gaps just here just so that it fits really nicely and gives it a really firm tension and brings it all close together uh, and looks really, really lovely. So now I'll pick up one size 15 bead. I'm exiting this one here and I'm going to go through these three beads. And this doesn't take very long. This is the final step, which really makes it nice and firm. If you don't want to do this step, this step is optional, but I think it's quite good. And it just gives it that nice little blue accent that ties it all together. I think it makes it look really nice. So we'll go through those three there. Just tie it in with this little 15. 
which I'm doing the uh, Pharaoh's Treasure colorway just here. Um, it looks like the the White Sphinx, unsurprisingly, is very popular. Uh, I can see what else. Yes, actually, they're going really well. I can see a lot of people are going for the the deal where we've got we've got actually uh, if you want to get them on discount, you can get it fifteen percent off when you buy all four colors together. It works out if you're in the UK um, a tenner per set, so you get a pair of earrings and the matching pendant for just ten pounds per kit. Uh, if you want to, I'll show you the the, the website when I finish this. Um, so that we can see, but I can see a lot of you are going for the um, the all four, which is great. We want to see you guys getting discounts, especially if you're going to make them as Christmas presents for people. Uh, but yeah, the otherwise, uh, it looks like the Sphinx is very very popular at the minute. Um, we've also got yes, the uh, the two purple ones, the Poison and the Passion, are pretty much neck and neck. Uh, going into the final straight, and as well, I guess, well, yeah, it's, it seems you guys are kind of liking them all, which is good to see. I'm glad. Sometimes, oh, whoops, I added a Delica in there, not paying attention. Sometimes when we do these things, you get one colour that becomes the out-and-out -out winner, but I can see it's a pretty much even between all of the things everybody's choosing. Need to just pay more attention to what I'm doing there. Look, uh, yeah, looking good. Everybody, I'm glad. I'm glad to see people are liking all the colors and they're all selling equally as well. That's kind of good. Uh, of course, I am not paying attention. I've taken my wrong bead. Right, there we go. So you do need to use the size 15s for this step. The Delicas would be a little bit too large. Uh, the 15s being just that little bit smaller make it fit really nicely. But the fifth, uh, but the Delicas, it would be too big. They wouldn't fit. There we go. Through there. We're almost done. And then I'm going to show you about the Shimmer Chain. Because the Shimmer Chain is a really, really fun product to use. I really like using Shimmer Chain. Uh, which if you haven't seen it before, which I wouldn't think too many of you might have, uh, it's... Lots and lots of fun. Only two more of these little beads to add in now. And then we're almost done. But I'll show you how the, the Shimmer Chain works as well, just so that you've got that. I do have a full demonstration on Shimmer Chain on our YouTube channel. If you want to go and check out our YouTube channel, it's on there. Um, there we go. One fully finished little pendant. Look at that. Doesn't that little blue in the gap make all the difference. They just look so good like that. That's my thoughts at least. There we go. There we go. It's all come together and it's looking fantastic now. Um, but yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, now we can see I've got my little pendanty section here. Obviously, you would just finish these threads off. You don't need these threads anymore. Just use the same technique to weave them off and get rid of them. And then I'll show you about the shimmer chain. So shimmer chain is this material just here, which comes in your kit. Whoops, I've got a very long piece just here. Here we are. So all you do have to do, essentially, is thread... So if you've got your, your little finished pendant there, you would just thread your shimmer chain through this little loop section that we've got there. So essentially... Wait, just get rid of my threads here. Actually, do you know what? I am going to demonstrate with one of the other colours just for this last little bit. So this is the shimmer chain here. Let's zoom out. It's a, a, it's a solid brass material that we've got. So it's actually um, really, really sparkly. When it moves, um, it uh, it's like it all puddles and you get this gorgeous sparkling effect. I don't know if you can quite see it on the camera, but uh, if I get it out of focus, you'll certainly see it when it moves. Come on, I was hoping it'll get out of focus. Wow, the camera can really focus. There we go. You can sort of see the sparkle a bit better when it's out of focus. But each time as you move, we call it shimmer chain because as it moves, those little sparkles catch the light. 
and uh, and looks spectacular, especially when it's sort of like moving and whatnot. But anyway, to do that, uh, I see there's a question about how you do this little stud. Essentially, the stud here is glued to the back of your Rivoli, and then you net around it just at the very, very end so that it's all hidden inside that stud. But anyway, I'll show you the shimmer chain now. I'll get back to that. That was a question from Elaine. So adding the back of the earring, it's just a stud that we've glued onto the back and then the netting hides that stud. There you go, look at that. And it would look like a big blingy thing. See that? Super cool. Um, so yeah, you, you do get the, the stud included, but you would need to use the glue. Uh, you would need to get some glue. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you... Here, this one. I'll show you it with this. So with the... Uh, this one is the Temptress colorway. I'll show you the, the shimmer chain with this one. It's a really nice sort of salmon-y tone. But... Uh, where's the end of it? Uh, where is my findings? Here they are. So yeah, if you've got shimmer chain... I'll use my bead mat because it definitely helps to have the mat showing you what we're doing. So if we've got a nice little bead mat, the bead mat really, really helps with keeping everything in position when you're working with shimmer chain. So the main finding that I'm going to be using is this little fella just here. They're really teeny weeny tiny little things. And just inside there, um, there, it's like two little cups sitting side by side with one another. And then at the top of it, there's a pair of little loopholes where you can attach like a jump ring through it or something. So if I can get it nice and close, hopefully it'll stay in focus. Hopefully, maybe not. There we go. So essentially, like I said, it's two little cups sitting side by side. And above the cups, you've got these two little holes and what we're going to do is bring the cups together. Let's zoom out a bit. Bring the cups together like this. And that will align the two holes to each other so that you can thread your jump ring through. So, nice and easy. First thing that you want to do is attach your little side collot to the end of your ball chain. So you can see how it's made up of loads of these teeny weeny little balls and that is what we're going to be using to um, sort of attach our finding to. It's solid brass so it's really strong. You can like, you'll see when I let go it leaves a big mark in my fingers because I'm, I'm pulling so hard on it that I can't break it but it puts a dent into my finger rather than breaking. Uh, let's see if it'll catch focus. See that? So you can see the dents from... from uh, so it doesn't break. You don't need to be too worried about breaking this. But essentially, if you've got your little side collot piece, we're going to place that on the mat, like this here. And you're going to need some pliers. So I've just got some stainless steel little pliers here. Uh, basic sort of chain nose pliers that come to a nice point and basically all I'm going to do is leave this on the bead mat and I'm going to let the bead mat do all the work for me. It's called a side collot. So yeah, if you have a look just here, because this has got all little balls and this has got a nice little cup shape there, the ball and the cup are pretty much exactly the same size. So when I try and put the ball into the cup, I can just drop it in, but because the ball and the cup are the same size, it fits really nicely, so it's super easy. You'll see, you can just drop it in and it will fit ever so perfectly inside that little gap. It's like so easy to get it to just drop in. I can take it off and you'll see every time you just drop it in place and it's got nowhere else to go. So it just sits nicely inside that little cup and then we bring in our pliers and this is why we use the bead mat. The bead mat stops things from moving around. So even though I'm moving this around, the bead mat's still the same. But yeah, if it's not moving on the bead mat, the bead mat's doing all the holding. When I'm trying to do this, my hands sometimes are a bit shaky. So if I'm trying to hold this, it shakes a bit. If it's on the table, if it's on the bead mat, it's not going anywhere. Then all you've got to do is just bring in those little pliers and very gently, very slowly, just 
give that a very gentle squeeze. It doesn't require much force at all. Just really, really gently like this. If you want to, you can even squeeze the tips together like that. And that's going to attach that little finding onto the top there. And you can see now, look at that, you can see straight through it, there's a nice little hole ready for a jump ring. So I can just take a standard size jump ring, which hopefully I've got one of them here. Yes, I do. Which again, I'll use my pliers. I'm going to open up my jump ring. Oh, this is a closed ring. I've got my jump ring here. So we, we're giving you a closed ring and you'll also get the jump ring. Open up your jump ring like this. It just threads really easily straight on there. See that? Look at that. Go straight on super easily onto a standard jump ring. Pop your little loop on there as well. And then we can just close that over nicely. And now you can see we've got a nice little jump ring on there and we have our closed ring as well, which is going to secure it. We can then measure the full length that we need for our necklace, just sort of, you can see how much it shines when I slide it through my fingers like that. See, I'll do it again. You can really see the sparkle happening then. It's lovely. It's a lovely material to work with. So anyway, uh, once you've figured out the size that you want for your necklace, position it where you want it to sit, and then you go, yep, this is exactly where I want it to be. You can then take your cutters. So if I have, uh, oh, yes, I'm going to measure about 50 centimeters here. So let's see, how much have I got? Look at that, 50 centimeter ruler, how handy. Uh, so if I measure about there, I'm going to measure 50 centimeters, which would make for a very long necklace, but it means that... I'm not cutting it to an odd length or anything. Pop that there. You can just use your standard cutters. So just a standard pair of jewelry cutters like this. Like the ones that come in our tool set, they will work nicely. And what you want to do is cut between the balls. Try not to cut the actual balls themselves. You want to give it a little snip between the balls. As I'm sure you'd love to do to some of your husbands right there, right between the balls, and it will cut nice and easily, and you're ready to attach your other side now. So I'll do it again. I'll do this one in left-hand view for lefties like moi. Uh, just to be fair. There we go, pop it into left-hand view. So again, I'm going to pop this on this side here. Pop that there. I'm going to just drop it into position, like so. Nice, easy. And then I'm going to bring in my pliers nice and close. Are we in left-hand view? Which side am I on? Yep, left-hand view. Very good. And then just with my pliers, very gently, just so softly, give that... Whoops, dropped it. Too soft. There we go. Drop that back in there again. Get it nicely in position. And just squeeze. There we go. Squeeze that there. And now I'll do my second side. In fact, actually, I will attach it to my pendant, shall I? Pop that on there. The jump ring should go through. We've tried to do it so that it will fit your jump ring as well, but it's definitely easier to do it before. So just, oops. If you let gravity help you, it's definitely easier. Come on, get through there. There we go. Pull that through there. And now I'm going to just attach my jump ring once again. So using my pliers, I'll open that up, thread on my little side calotte, thread on my lobster clasp, and I'm going to close that over now. And there you go. That's, that's literally it. That's the whole thing now. The whole f piece is now finished, ready, and made. And all I've got to do now is just attach this onto there. And there you have one finished, gorgeous, sparkly necklace. See, look, now you can see when it's slightly out of focus. It's trying to focus on here now. Look how much it shimmers when it moves. 
being just that little bit out of focus, the camera works much better for sheen, seeing the shimmer and the glint. But yeah, you can see it's a lovely, lovely sort of effect that you get from that chain. See how much it, see how much it shines and glitters? But yeah, beautiful. Very, very good little material. And then all you've got to do is just pop it onto yourself, whatever you want to wear it. Just pop that on there. And then, ta-da, one gorgeous pendant attached to my chest. Wait a second. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy this. There we go. Beautiful. And there, yeah, you can see again, matches my beard. Uh, you can see the chain shimmers. It really catches the light. Uh, and then that little pendant. There we go. So this one is the Temptress colorway. Yes, uh, that's a question there from Pam. The one I'm wearing right now makes my eyes pop. Uh, again, you can, of course, choose the exact size that you want, uh, but that's the Temptress, just here. So there's your Temptress. This one is the Poison, which has that really beautiful, it's got like a red with a blue coating on it. It's like a, a ruby with a sapphire coating. Pam says, Matthew is trying to tempt us. Oh yeah. Uh... <laughs> So you can see it's got that sapphire under a uh, ruby underneath and then it's got like a sapphire coating over the top so it gives it that really rich sort of color that's the poison and then it's got this beautiful for some reason it looks really dark but it's a beautiful gorgeous metallic purple color so you can see when it moves you can get the glint of the actual color there yeah see that see that sort of purpley tone it's a really lovely metallic purple color all around the outside uh, and there's its matching earring. Then you've also got your white sphinx just here, which is this one, which has that gorgeous uh, evening rainbow AB coating on the inside. It's got the AB coating on the outside as well uh, on your little bicones. The one that uh, which comes with that nice silver ball chain. Uh, I've been working with the one just here, which is our um, Pharaoh's Treasure. Pharaoh's Treasure. That's this one here. I hope he spelt it right. Pharaoh's Treasure is this one. And is that all four? Yes. So Temptress, Pharaoh's Treasure. We've got the White Sphinx. And then we've got Poison as well. So whichever one you like best. If I show you the website for today... Uh, here we go. This is today's website. If you take a, qu uh, a quick little look, um, there is the homepage on our website for today. Uh, maybe I can just zoom in a tiny touch. There we go. Uh, you can see we've got the uh, thing just up here where you can navigate around if you want to. Our tutorial library full of all of our video tutorials. If you have a look just underneath patterns here, it says video tutorials. It's the one below patterns video tutorials you can click on that and it will take you to our tutorial library otherwise um oops wrong button there if we click on today's one so if you click the link in the description that says hey i want to make my own uh if you click view all related products just here see that button the dark purple one you click on that it will take you to where you can get them so here they are pharaoh's treasure white sphinx poison seeing as she killed herself with an asp. Uh, and then we've got the Temptress as well. So those are the... This is the one that I did the, the little shimmer chain demonstration with. This is the one here of uh, the one that I actually made. We've got the White Sphinx, which looks lovely, and the Poison, which has that gorgeous red, uh, the ruby sort of coloured rivoli with the sapphire coating. And if you want to get all four of them, you get 15% off. Actually, you get more than that. You get 16.6666666666% off uh, right there. So it works out. If you're in the UK, 39.95. But of course, you can, if I just show you up here at the top, you can change your currency. Whoops, a bit too far zoomed out. I was only hoping to go out the tiniest bit. Uh, is it going to zoom out a little? No, come on now, behave. Oh well. Up here you can change your currency. So if you want to put it in euros, you can put it in euros. US dollars, you can do that too. So I'll put it in US dollars because I know a lot of you will be going, how much is that in dollars? Uh, it works out here, $16.65 for the kit. Or you can get your 16.6666666666% off 
uh, just here, which is our uh, 55, 65, and you get all four of them. So really, really good bargain that way. Um, it works out um, quite inexpensively that way. So yeah, if you want to do that, we do also have all of the different findings and stuff down here. You can get some of the shimmer chain. Uh, we've got the clasps and all the findings and things. We need to put some more of the shimmer chain in here. But anyway, uh, it's all in here. You can go and search all of this. And then lastly, don't forget, if you want to get our... Uh, if you missed last week's video where I did the mini kits, which is, see up there in the top right corner where it says previous shows, if you click on the one where it says learn something new, made in mini kit, made in minutes, uh, you can watch the video, which is just here, you just click that big button, but otherwise you scroll on down, jewelry mini kits, it's right there, you can click on that, and you'll see all of our mini kits which I've got it in US dollars still. There you go. Five kits for $21 or it's 15 pounds. It works out the same amount pretty much. Uh, so yeah, if I put it back into pounds just now, there you go. Each of these kits, which we have nine different options, I think. Yes, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like one of them must be out of stock for some reason. I'll need to put that one back in stock. Uh, there should be nine different ones and then essentially if you want to get uh, Any five for 15 it's here and you get a free gift of a pair of earrings as well You can come on here and you can choose the ones that you want you can add any more if you want You'll get 25% off each of those so if you want to give away some nice Christmas presents You can say hey, I want two of these crown knots the colors are assorted so they're all different and varied We've got lots of different colors if you want two of the crown knots Two honeycombs. Ah, the honeycomb is the one that says it's out of stock. I should put that one back in stock. Okay. Um, the snake knot, we'll have two of them. Do you know what? I'll have a leather link. Uh, that gives you five, so you can add it to your basket for 15. Plus, you've got your free gift in there as well. But if you also want to add, for example, an extra um, one of the braiding kits, again, you'll get that 25% off price. Uh, the Helter Skelter, add one of them, 25% off. Why not get one of them all? Then you'll get them all at that same 25% off price. And then you can add it to basket and it will all be. Look at that. We've got all of those kits, 10 different kits for £30 if you want to do that. But yeah, that's uh, today's special. Otherwise, um, check out from the homepage. There's a button here at the bottom which says view all upcoming and previous shows. If you click on that one there, it will take you to where you can see all the different things that we've done on all the shows, like our beaded Christmas tree over here on the right. Um, yeah, just go check them out if you want. See, look, loads and loads of things to, to try out, play around with, loads of things to look at, lots of lovely designs. Go and have a look. We've got lots of videos as well. Posy of Roses, for example. That's a nice one. Um, all sorts. Go, go have a look. Go see what you think. This one was nice. But yeah, if you haven't seen us before, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this video as well, of course, which is nice. Um, uh, yeah, like the channel. Go have a look at our Facebook group. Uh, we've got, I think, 7,800 people already, nearly 8,000 people. Uh, on our bead group so go join the bead group we're having lots of fun in there we have a competition that we're running at the minute as well uh, so if you want to enter our beading competition uh, you could win a prize as well we give away um, credit for our store um, for you to go shopping on our website for free more or less uh, but if you want to enter that it's our festive beading competition so you can go jump over onto our bead group join up to the bead group enter the festive beating competition but otherwise either way just sort of have fun enjoy the group itself chat to people post pictures of your things there's lots going on in there it's lots of fun and people have been really enjoying it so if you want to be a part of the fun after the stream go join our bead group if you want to try out some of our beading patterns for free we give you a five pound voucher so you can sign up to our uh, our newsletter. There's a link down in the description that says give me five pounds worth of patterns. You can click on that, give us your email address and we'll email you your pattern, um, uh, your, your voucher for you to get your five pounds worth of patterns. But yeah, thanks everybody. I think that's pretty much everything for today. I hope you've had lots of fun. It's about 4.30pm here in the UK. So I'm off to have a lovely weekend. 
Um, yet yeah, one last time, I'll just show you the four different colorways because they are beautiful. Um, so if you want to get them, uh, go jump on and have a look on the website nice and quick uh, so that they don't run out of stock. This one here is the Poison. Uh, this one here is the White Sphinx. We've got the Pharaoh's Treasure in that sort of typical blue and gold of, uh, of Egyptians, as we know. And then you've also got your Temptress as well, which is sort of that rosy, goldy, coppery, purpley. It's like a really interesting one. And that Rivoli is beautiful too. But yeah, that's pretty much it from me for today. Hope you've had lots of fun. Hope you learned something new. Uh, but yeah, if you need to check out the instructions for the actual Rivoli part, go have a look at our Crystal Kitty Cat uh, video. Um, that'll show you how to do the whole Rivoli thing. Um, but yeah. Thank you all very, very much for watching. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. And I will see you all next week for some more beating fun. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye-bye.